to Naughty or Nice with Miss Cassie. Tonight, my very special guest is Mistress Tetra. Hi, hey, everyone. And we've known each other a few years. Yes, going yeah. on two, little over two, close to that. Yeah, I know. I've been at Sanctuary since they opened their doors, and you were there shortly. A couple months after, after, so yeah. yeah. And I know we'll be celebrating the three years in May. I know. It's so exciting. I can't believe it's been that <laughs> it's been that long already. And like just yesterday, we were reopening and trying to figure out what to do. I know. Well, you've come a long way since you joined Sanctuary. You I have. have. <laughs> you have. You're into all sorts of stuff. As a matter of fact, you have two of the most successful play parties down at that dungeon. I tried. <laughs> I have a lot of help, so it's not all me. I have a lot of people behind the scenes helping me with promotion and all my performers that come. I really couldn't do it without any of them. And you're one of them. And oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I always love your events. As a matter of fact, I started out at your club tent. Yeah. Which started before Anarchy. Right. That was in August, and mm -hmm. Anarchy didn't start till November. And we do one every month. So, I don't know, a couple months there? I think Anarchy mm -hmm. was the third or fourth club I'd ever done. But it, it took off, and once we did Anarchy, uh, Club Tempt kind of became the club that we only did twice a year, and Anarchy runs the third week of every month now. And what a club it is. Oh my god, it's like uh, one of the most popular ones, I think. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, well, everybody likes that one, you know, the, the no holds bar. I was going to say, yeah, we get to be a little naughtier, and I think that, uh, mm -hmm. that helps not only for stage performances, because we can do things that people actually want to see, Mm -hmm. um, but it allows everyone to explore their own kind of play in their way and what they want to do themselves. So, Oh, it most certainly does that. Absolutely. You know, everybody always tells me it's the best event. <laughs> and I start describing the events we have at the club, and I start describing that when they're like, I don't want to go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> we have one coming up on Friday. Awesome. And what's the theme of this one? Uh, so Friday the 21st, we have Steampunk Apocalypse Part 2. Um, I did an online poll this year when we decided to do new parties, and I asked everyone what they wanted me to bring back from the first year, and Steampunk Apocalypse uh, was actually one of the most heavily voted themed parties, so we are doing it again. Awesome! Oh, it's going to be so much fun. <laughs> you know, everybody's been working on their costumes, everyone's been sewing gears and monocles <laughs> and brown leather to everything, so... I'm really excited not only to see what everyone comes up with, but we're having a costume contest. Oh, cool. So I'm hoping it'll get people to be very creative. Wow. Will you also be doing the Survivor Challenge at this one? I, we will. We Ooh, will. Ooh, anything special and devious in mind this time, or is it um, a surprise? It's a surprise as always. <laughs> um, I can give you a little detail. We will have a mistress that has never been a part of the Survivor Challenge with us this time. Mm. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, for those of you who do not know what the Survivor Challenge is, at every party, every Anarchy party, we do a contest for any um, subs, slaves, and basically heavy masochists. And mm -hmm. you get to join six mistresses up on stage, two mistresses per round, and there's only one masochist standing at the end. Um, the challenges change every single party, so you can never prepare yourself. It can be mental, it can be physical, uh, it can be a little bit of both. So, Mistress Remedy Ann will be joining us for the first time ever for the Survivor oh, Challenge. She'll be fun. And she is doing something very, very special. So, oh. that's all I can really say, but it's going to be a fun one. And she can be me. Yes, she can. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, you guys are really going to have to survive this one. I know Remedy. <laughs> and she's the third round, so you have to make it all oh, the way to you her. have to make it through the first couple. Yeah, and it isn't easy. You know, everybody thinks, ah, oh, you know, I can tough this out. Uh-uh. No, it's no holds bar, and um, it's our job to make you fail. And we enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, our delight. <laughs> so this time around, uh, we will be doing that. Um, we're going to have an aftercare station, which is going to be new. Oh, so people can new. sit, relax. Um, we can talk to them afterwards. Because um, I don't like shoving people right off the stage. So we're going to be doing a couple things new with the Survivor Challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely keeping some of the good old qualities that we've always had. Oh, that's good. You're not going to molly call them in this aftercare. I mean, it's just like a pit you throw them in with blankets, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Scorpions and all. <laughs> oh, 
I'm sorry, I'm just not really that into aftercare. I, I, <laughs> it's not something I ever personally needed a lot of, and I don't have a lot of patience for it when I'm done playing. <laughs> well, my only thing that I really worry about is their mental state. I don't yes. want people to try their hardest, and maybe because it was their hardest and truly their hardest, mm -hmm. and they get you know sent off stage, and that can be mentally traumatic and I don't want anyone Absolutely. to think that way so I want there to be a little bit of encouragement we'll talk to them afterwards if you know they're feeling down because uh, there's been a few people that you know have told me like you know I wish I could have hung in longer and I don't want mm -hmm. them to think that they failed just because they dropped out when it was their right time to drop out of the survivor challenge. And, and you never know if they, they don't have somebody there to you exactly. know make sure they're okay That's afterwards. Now I may them. joke about not doing aftercare, but the truth is after I play with somebody, I may not do the actual aftercare myself, but I do make sure they're provided for. Right. Correct. You know, I check in with them, I make sure that they've had water, I make sure that, you know, mentally they're ready to go, that they're not gonna crash the car on the way home. Exactly. You know, because I don't do guilt well, so we are not going to do anything that will allow you to do anything that will make me feel anything. Exactly. <laughs> so I'll have basically water, some snacks, and some cute oh. subby girls there, you know, if you need a shoulder to cry on. If you... Oh, you're too darn sweet. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk about our scene that we'll be doing. Oh, you and I have a scene yes, at Anarchy. And we'll be recreating a scene from one of the first shows we did there with some electrical play, some insertable electrical mm -hmm. play. So if that's your kink, you should definitely come on out. Uh, we'll be playing with Pixie, actually. Uh, and did we get the the other girl, or would it just be Pixie? Um, I believe it's just Pixie. But I do know that Lizette said she's interested in being tied up on stage, so if we need... Someone else to be thrown up there. We do have her as well. Oh, and she is so much fun. She's adorable, and her outfit is amazing. It's spectacular. I will have pictures up online everywhere of Lizette tomorrow. So. Mm. Oh, and she is so much fun, and she's nice and bendy, so we can do some fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what part do you want exposed? And she <laughs> likes being naughty, so we love her. Oh, we do. We do. Between her and Pixie, this is going to be one hell of a scene. I hope she can make it. I know she'll be there. We were uh, going over all the craziness she did for her outfit. She has goggles she attached a scope Aww. to, and she made awesome little leather arm pads, like shoulder pads, that she attached to like a little Victorian top. She looks fantastic. Her oh, outfit's going to wow. be better than mine. <laughs> I'm jealous. The steampunk's so much fun. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I get to pull out all that special jewelry I have with all the gears. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, wow. God, I just can't believe that you've been doing these parties this long. Yeah, you know, uh, I only took a little break there for the holidays. Um, we didn't do anything November, December, um, mm -hmm. but I kept my promotion really hard, and we hit the new year with the Vampire Strikes Back, the mm -hmm. Star Wars party. That was so fun. Um, it was, yeah, it was <laughs> Very eventful. Um, if you guys didn't make it to that one, you truly missed yeah, out. Yeah, I've never been a Wampa before, and I have to tell you, it was awesome. <laughs> I like oh, arms. your scene was awesome. Your outfit was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had such a good time doing that. Now, I noticed while you were on hiatus that you had some interesting advertisements out there that you have actually become so successful that you're willing to help other people in other locations start their own anarchy parties in Club Town. Uh, yes, uh, Club Town Club Anarchy will work with other promoters mm -hmm. if they're interested and if they express seriousness to us. Um, I have a couple people that I work with behind the scenes and um, we've helped like Lovely um, with Midnight Mass. Oh, awesome. Um, we're actually currently working with one other person, or starting to, mm -hmm. and I don't want to give too many details out yet, but um, you know, if you contact us and you tell us what you're looking for, um, we can try and work with you and Ben, depending on what each individual person wants and is trying to accomplish. So we kind of hear everyone out and see what we can do and equally cross-promote with each other. Oh, that is really cool. Well, I am doing a play party on the 12th of July. It's a Betty Page tribute party. Oh, I love it already. <laughs> and we're going to do a Betty Page look-alike contest, and then we're going to do a threesome contest of the best Snidely Whiplash 
Nell and Dudley do right. Oh my gosh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> so I may be talking to you about a little help with promotion for that. Let me you know. I'm here. <laughs> awesome, because oh, it's going to be so much fun. It's Western bondage. I was going to say, Koi will be great at that one. She oh, already yeah. has the whole Betty Page. Yeah, I have a going. feeling she'll probably win hands down. But we're going to give everybody a chance. <laughs> you never know what somebody's going to come up with. Yeah, and, and there's, there's a lot out there. Actually, uh -huh. I have a friend that looks quite a bit like Betty Page, even more so than Quinn. So if I got her out there, I believe she may oh. win. We'll see. Oh, could you imagine if we got three that were just such dead ringers, we could do Betty triplets. Oh, my gosh. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> you could get some fun uh, photography going for that one, too, for your promotion. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. i got a, uh, quite a few photographers that I'm going to be contacting. and um, yeah, I've got a few ideas. Good. Absolutely. I, I just talked to a couple of the girls at the dungeon today that, you know, I was going, well, you're both switches. Tie each other up on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we don't have enough switches, like, tying each other up and doing performances like that. I know Fiona did one for Star Wars. Oh, and nice. uh, she was playing Naughty and putting uh, the, what were they, the slave Leia's, I think, because Fiona was Chewbacca, and she had two slave Leia's that she put in very naughty positions. Oh, that's too cute. And Vampire Cyan came up and... Uh, taught her a lesson. So I like the whole switchy scenes. I think it, it makes for good performances. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I want to showcase our girls. We have a lot of really talented girls down at that dungeon, and we just don't see enough of them on stage. I agree. I agree. And we don't see them out of their cleansing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Come to anarchy, everyone. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I think we need to do a naked, naked conga line. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> hmm. yeah. And I have to plan it in an upcoming party. Absolutely. Can you imagine doing the bunny hop and everybody's blue going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I like We might be able to make that work. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, making them wear the, the, the bunny tail for the bunny hop is, is a must go. Cute little bunny ant plug. Oh, I like there it. You. I like it. We just found Kitty's little mm. tail, so we have her tail already. Look at the interest. It has possibilities. Hey, uh, if you're watching, click on chat and join us in the chat room. Is there anybody in there tonight? Yes, there is. Um, Mr. Cyan is in the chat room. Hello, Ooh. Mistress. Hi, Mistress. Switch Asa is in the chat room. Hello, oh, beautiful. Hey, darling. Hey, that was one of our slave Leia's. Mm. And Haven Star. Well, hello, hello. Welcome. And Pig Carrie. And there are other people that are watching that are not in the chat room. Please oh. join us in the chat room and get your burning questions answered. Absolutely. We miss you, Carrie. We do. We do. We miss your wonderful laugh. <laughs> when are you bringing it back to us? Yes. I guess you guys should be asking us the questions, not huh? vice versa. Um, Carrie, Carrie <laughs> is moving to Seattle. Really? And Carrie got a, a new job. And, um, you know, so we're very excited for her. Oh, we are excited. Yes. Oh, best of luck with that, Carrie. Yes, yeah, we're excited. And Seattle is a fun town for kink. They've got a 24-hour dungeon there. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I know some people up there. <laughs> I'll we'll have to check it out if I'm ever in town. Oh, I highly cool. recommend it. You know, I don't remember the name. <laughs> I just know how to get there. Okay. Well, hey, that's the important part of it. And I know the people that go, so I'll just contact them. <laughs> yeah, but do they have a drive through <laughs> You know, they should. They're, you know, it's about time we had drive through kink, don't you think? We were just talking about uh, kinky GPS and how you should have a GPS that says, turn left at the light, bitch, and... Just, you got lost, now you find your own fucking way home. And just oh, says all kinds of awful things. How many I thought guys you were going to come that? up with something like hot locator and they were going to be kink locator. <laughs> they already have that. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. I, I just set up one of my um, classes on Meetup and it's like, oh, so no, there, are there a lot of people that are interested in this? Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's a fun little site. I haven't been on it. I'll have to check it oh, out. Oh, you should. I mean, if you want to look for something to do in L.A., just put in what it is we want to do on Meetup, and there's a group for it. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, it is, it's just such a fun little site. So it's like I'm always looking for new places to promote. Definitely. I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tied enough people yet. You guys need to come to my rope classes. 
I have not tied enough people in LA, LA yet. When I have tied a million people, um, what will we call ourselves? Angelinos? <laughs> How many have we tied? Are you keeping track at this point? Oh, no, I just keep tying. That's too much <laughs> fun. I suppose I probably should. <laughs> I think you'd be like a million and, and tied or something. Oh, yeah. Since, uh, you know, Mickey D's will be Mickey Kink. There you go. <laughs> I like it. They do, too. That may be the next thing we do. All right. So you got Steampunk Apocalypse this time. And don't you have another one coming up next month? We do. We will be having in April. It'll be April 19th. Um, we're doing Spanking Bad. Um, this will be Club Tempt and mm. Anarchy, which means on our main stage. We will have BDSM and kink-friendly shows, and in the back Hades room on that stage there, we will have all of our explicit, naughty, and sexual shows that everyone loves from Anarchy. And I believe you do need the VIP bracelet. You, you do bracelet. need a membership. Um, you can get a free membership if you come into Sanctuary. All you have to do is sign up for it. You can also purchase one online. Um, we have links at clubtemptlax.com. You can check out all my events, all about me, where I'll be, everything you need to know, basically. Um, right. And the VIP membership, do they need to apply for that like 24 hours in advance, or how are they doing that? Now? The VIP, as long as you purchase it uh, before the event, the day before the event, mm -hmm. so basically the event is Friday of this week, you have to purchase it before Friday. Basically, mm -hmm. the day of the event, we close down purchasing memberships because we're no longer allowed to sell them. So okay. make sure you get them the day before the event. You can either come in, purchase them online. Make yeah, sure you we get can it. do it online now. And now, are there two level or tiers of membership? There's a regular membership, and then there's a VIP. Um, the regular membership is free. Mm -hmm. um, the VIP is a $40 one. There's a couple extra perks. You get in cheaper each time. Um, you may get better seating, cheaper drinks. It just depends, and the memberships are for anything at Sanctuary. So, so if you're a frequent party goer, the yeah. VIP membership will really pay off. <laughs> Just like you get your card you know, stamped every time you get your coffee and you get a free one. Well, this kind of works the same way. You get 10 stinkings if you come to the party. <laughs> you get 10 stinkings if you come to the party. Absolutely. Bend over, bitch. <laughs> so, anybody else in the chat room? Yes, we have Jason has just entered the chat room. And... Um, and Subby Bree has answered the chat room, and we have a question in the chat room. Oh, All right. right. Um, Switch Aza said, "Ladies, what is your favorite part of planning an event or scene for an event?" Uh, favorite thing to plan for an event and favorite scene. Yeah. What is what is your favorite part about planning an event or a scene for an event? You know, like when you guys are planning a scene for your scene? My, my favorite part about planning an event really is once I have the theme, I can come up with everything I want to do for each scene in particular. And once I have a couple specific scenes that I know I'm going to want to be done, it's placing mm -hmm. each person that I want to perform because I'm very particular about who I have do what. I want the people to mesh well together. Um, I want it to all, all click, basically, and you know, you want to make sure that the chemistry is good between players as well. Oh, so, absolutely, um, absolutely, and I know I pay a lot of attention to who I schedule in what order, you know, depending on um, how edgy they are. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> we do want to build to that crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the funnest things, I think, is once you've um, Pick the day. You've decided on the theme and kind of the way you want to go. You can fill in the rest. You fill in the rest and, and deciding what kind of entertainment you want to do is always fun. And Asa throws some fun parties out there as well. She Cinematic does. kink. When are we going to see that again? Oh, that was too much fun. <laughs> you know, and I, I love, you know, the way she always does a narrative with her events. Yeah, I do too. It's different and it's something you can definitely identify her party from others. Yes, and I always feel like I'm a little bit smarter after her party. <laughs> <laughs> do we have another question in the chat room? I'm here. Haven Star said, how about, how about, she wants to, to start a topic, which is kind of cool. She goes, how about a topic of proper etiquette in public for Slaves and stuff. Oh, that is a good topic. In a non-kinky spot, I assume. Is she uh, talking about kink events or in the um, in the general public with vanillas? I don't know. You could cover both of them. <laughs> you could okay. cover both of them and see how well it works. Yeah. 
Well, I know that uh, for my submissives in public, it's just uh, the high protocol is modified. Instead of kneeling at my feet, you can stand and just lightly tap me on the shoulder. <laughs> I won't make you kneel in public unless I'm having a particularly cranky day and I just might make you crawl on that supermarket floor and lick up that jar that you just spilled. Right? If you make me mad enough, you yeah. never know. Glass and all. As far as public, I appreciate being called Domina, but depending on who's around and what's happening, um, I have speech restrictions, but other than that, they can pretty much be themselves. Um, I have a very, I'd say like a light switch. You know when you're supposed to be in your DS mode and when your etiquette should be on and when we're a little more relaxed. And um, my subs and subs definitely know the difference. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and yeah, educating them to the difference definitely. too. You know, because there's there's places that are public, and then it's public. Well, then I have a lot of places that I go that are public, <laughs> but they know what I do, and they know I'm kind of crazy and out there, and so my public to them is very different. I'm a little bit more kinky, and they go with it. So, I mean, yeah. it all depends. <laughs> yeah, I might have different daylight rules and nighttime rules. Exactly. <laughs> if they can't see you clearly, I may just send you down that alley to run a little errand. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but protocol in a, in a kink situation is different. Um, I know a lot of subs don't last with me because I am very high protocol. You know, if you can't even give me a proper letter to begin with, you start emailing me and you do not address me properly and you do not have a proper closing to that note, you are not going to get very far with me. If you can't even write a decent letter with a greeting, a body, and an ending. And proper grammar. And proper grammar. I'm sorry, none of this abbreviation stuff. You're not going to get far with me because I need to know that you have it up here that you can at least follow that little direction. Because if you can't follow that much, you're not going to make it far in my, in my particular dynamic. I agree. The first approach had everything to do with it. And how they write and speak to you, and I'm very big on the follow-up. Like, if I haven't met you in person mm -hmm. yet, um, if you cancel on me or you try to reschedule, it doesn't look good, doesn't bode well for you. No. So, I mean, it, it depends. You have to be serious. You have to be committed. I'm very open and willing to give almost anyone a chance, but lots of people don't make it just because they can't handle the first couple steps. And it's not even that they're hard. It's they don't pay attention and listen to detail. And that's what it's really about because I don't have time and patience for you to fuck up. Well, yeah, and if you're asking me for a favor right off the bat about some fantasy that you have, well, we're not even going to go down that road if you can't follow the basic beginning of this. You know, because I get so many guys that contact me, oh, yes, mistress, I want to do anything you want. And then before you know it, it was like, come to my class, come meet me. Well, I, I wanted to meet you in private. It's like, Yep. If you want to meet me in private, you schedule a session. Done. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, if they don't want to come in and schedule me for like a session, mm -hmm. I'm willing to, if you want to pamper me and show me that you are worth my time in other ways, I'm willing to let you do that. And Absolutely. I've actually I've had some good luck with some slaves lately. So. Oh, good. I've actually had two or three that have uh, proven themselves worthy. So. Oh, and that is the name of the game, you know. Hello like... to a pay slut out there, because he is one of my new mm. little bitches. <laughs> nice. So, how's it going in that chat room? Oh, it's going really well. We had Miss Cotty, who's just entered in the chat room, and she is one of our brand new staff writers on TSR Network. Oh my so goodness. really, really glad to see her in the chat room. A um, couple questions, and do you want me to do each one, or do you want to tell you both of them at the same time? Well, I don't know. How much thinking is this going to require? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason said, do you ever freestyle in a scene, or do you plan everything in advance? And then we'll go to the next question after this is answered. Mm. I usually freestyle, but I will find out what the person's interests are. Um, and kind of take it from there, do similar types of play, mm -hmm. and build up uh, depending upon what I think their threshold is and how they're responding to my types of play. Yeah, I, even with my um, closely choreographed scenes, which I sometimes do, yeah. you know, make them follow a script, I do allow a certain amount in there for um, improv. Yeah. 
because you never know if you know you're going to get shits and giggles over something, and you just want to keep smacking that ass. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it just bounces so good, and it's like, why would I deny me, and why would I deny you this beautiful bouncy butt? Yeah, it's definitely about your headspace and what you feel like doing at that moment. Absolutely, and reading the audience, or you know, or reading the sub. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, you know, we do take your feelings into consideration. It does happen. Yeah. You said there was another question. Yeah, there's two more. I'll go to the second to the second one. I mean the first one. Mm -hmm. What are you wait, what are you both looking forward to at Domcom this year? Oh my Everything. goodness. Yes. Um, <laughs> I am so excited about DomCon. Me too. I usually feel very unprepared and not ready. And this year I feel very just on point and it could be next weekend and I feel like I'm ready for it. Nothing in particular, just the entire event as a whole. I'm looking forward to seeing people and meeting new subs and slaves out there and walking around the different booths. So everything in general. Checking out the parties. Oh yeah, I'm planning on going to the Mistress Tea this time yes. and all the nice little events that we have. And I'll be teaching three classes this wow. year. Fantastic. Yeah, I'll be teaching an industry uh, bondage class and then two other at the convention. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to do a basic bondage and then we're going to do rope bikinis. Oh, it'll be so much fun. Oh, they you are. have Tangles for that? Tangles seems like should be a perfect model. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see who comes up at that time. I mean, there's always some girl at the table I can grab. Mm -hmm. And hopefully she's got a lot of hair and I can just... <laughs> <laughs> Anything you're looking to in particular for DomCon? Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, the whole the whole weekend is always... A, I never stop moving that weekend. Yeah, I know. You know? <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm doing demos. You know, I usually perform. It's like, you know, it's like I, I, I try to do something every day in addition to the shift I'm going to have to work at the table. Exactly. You're exhausted by the time it's done. I am, but it's like now I'm planning all the artwork for all the little goodies I'm going to be handing out and the play parties and the classes and networking and seeing those people I want to get to see once a year. Yeah, totally. I'm excited about that. Yes. Oh, great question. Do we have another one? Uh, yes, we do. We also have a couple more people that have come into the chat room. Woo. We have um, uh, where are, um, Brenna, and then we also have um, Joanna. They've come into the chat room. Uh -huh. and, um, Hi. And, and the question that we have is from Subby Bree. Uh, and Joanna says, good evening, ladies. Hello, <laughs> Joanna. Hi, Joanna. And um, Subby Bree said, uh, what is your favorite part about hosting events? Mm. That's you, a good one. I was going to say, would you like to go first? Would you but like you me? know, then again, I, I, I just have no problem getting that microphone in my hand talking. So I mean, it's just, I, I love to MC events. I think my favorite part is getting to see the shows actually put together and live on stage because I take so much time prepping them and planning them and putting everything from the costume to the perfect person. So to see my vision up there on stage and it all come together is usually satisfying. <laughs> so oh, that's I what I look forward to. See that is a great, great part of the fun. Yeah. You know, but just seeing the people that come and see them having a good time when I see the audience is engaged. I'm a happy camper. Yeah, I was going to say that and definitely afterwards. I usually get a, a huge influx of people writing me either saying how much fun they had or it was their first time at a dungeon or sanctuary in general. And that to me it makes the parties completely worth it and mm. makes me want to keep hosting um, just that everybody enjoys it that much. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's always nice to get feedback like that. So you know that you're giving the people what they want. Yeah, definitely. It's a very rewarding feeling. And then, of course, <laughs> it's a time to deny. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> that's a little different story. <laughs> that's a little different kind of play. Oh, any more people in the chat room or questions or cookie butter? Um, we, haven't, we haven't had, um, you know, we have people that are watching. If you're watching the show, please click onto the, um, the pop-out link to the chat room if you're watching from FetLife or come to tsrnetwork.com live and um, click on the chat room and come on in. But I want to ask a question of Tetra. Mm, yes. So what piqued your interest in putting on events? I mean, that it takes mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of work. Trust me, I know. We did BDSM <laughs> Pride Day and... Um, and TSR people's TSR Network People's Choice Awards. So, and 
we're going to be gearing up to doing all those again, which is going to be crazy. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, what motivates you to do these? Um, in 100% honesty, I wanted to throw one party <laughs> for my birthday uh, two years ago, and once I started planning my birthday, um, people kept getting ideas after it that they wanted me to do and, and host, and uh, Mr. Cyan just asked me, you know, if I'd be interested in, in throwing my own monthly party, and it was kind of just a downhill fall after that. Just It became from every other month to every single month, mm -hmm. and really the people showing up and attending and enjoying it so much, that's that's what keeps me motivated to keep on going. But originally, I just wanted to throw a birthday party. <laughs> so I'm I'm happy it took off that well and you know people enjoyed it as much as they did because oh, and I'm so I had no idea but I mm -hmm. I enjoy it and you know I thank everybody for making me be able to have that position to give them that as well. Awesome. It's a full circle. <laughs> yeah, I used to throw a lot more events than I do now, yeah. and I I know just how much work goes into that. You know, I know how much I have to do every month just to put on two rope classes. I can imagine yeah, doing a play party on like top a of that. Full time job. Wow. But you do such a marvelous job. I make it look easy. <laughs> do, she does. We have any more people in the uh, chat room or any more questions? Yes, we have a chat room. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, we have a question from Joanna. Yes. And she says, Question for Miss Cassie. Mm. Have you ever worked with anyone of the cross-dressing persuasion? And if so, have you ever found it awkward? Well, actually, I work with a lot of people that cross-dress or are transgendered. Um, they're people. I don't find it awkward. As a matter of fact, I find them kind of interesting, you know, depending on how far they'll let me go. <laughs> would this happen to be Joanne Fitzgerald that we're speaking with? Yeah. Well, hello, Jan. I think I'll be seeing you tomorrow, correct? Mm -hmm. I will be playing with Joanne tomorrow. Nice. Yes. Oh, just what are you planning to do to Joanne? Oh, well, I, I can't say while she's watching. Ah. But, uh, we have a very fun scene planned for tomorrow. We're going to be nice. doing two hours and uh, usually throw a little bit of corporal in there. Oh, she has very beautiful good. outfits she wears for me. I strip them off her. So. Oh, well done. <laughs> oh, that's always sexy. Another question? Yes, we have a question from Jason. <gasps> what would be the best way to go about contacting you to discuss setting up a scene with you as a submissive? Hmm. With you as a dom, he clarifies that. Well, of course. Um, <laughs> that goes without saying. I was going to say, you can reach me on any of my social medias. You can reach me on FetLife very easily. You can also reach me on Facebook very easily, or you can hit up my website and email me straight through Yahoo, mistress underscore tetra at yahoo.com. Um, I mean, there are ways to contact me through my club website as well, clubtemptlax.com. I have an about me section there, and it you know tells you exactly how you can contact me and what is proper and how to approach me. So. Oh, very good. Very good. I know in my my Fet Life profile, I have the protocol basically yeah. listed there, but I can tell the majority of you don't bother to read it. Not at all. Another question? Uh, yeah, and I'm very, I'm going to bother to read this. Okay. <laughs> um. Um. Vanastar said, what characteristics or qualities do you look for in a submissive? And then Joanna made a statement. Joanna, she said, indeed, mistress. I think that we are clear on the topic we'll be covering tomorrow. <laughs> yes, we are very, very clear. Um, I'll go ahead and let you start on that one. Well... Let's see. What do I look? The number one thing I look for in my sub is honesty. If you can't be honest with me, this is not going to work in our dynamic. I need to know what's going on. You know, um, I do establish a protocol where it's where you can ask me just about any question. You may not like the answer that I give you, but I will answer every question. But it has to start out with honesty, because if I don't know what and who I'm dealing with this DS dynamic is not going to work. Definitely. Honesty, huge factor. Um, 
You know, I take on many different subs and slaves. Um, I can find different uses and or needs mm -hmm. and different, you know, services I can put them in depending on each person because one person may not be able to do labor work but they may be able to help me out in other ways with my parties or something. So depending on who you are, what you're interested in doing, I usually talk to whoever is interested and before you can even be under my consideration you have to prove yourself through service. So there's a couple different levels that you have to make it through and, and really I can work with anybody. It, they just have to be respectful, honest, and you know, willing to show up and work with my schedule. Well, absolutely, and I do feel service is a big part of the DS dynamic. Huge. If you enter into this and you think you're not going to do service, don't even talk to me. Yeah, you know, because I need you there for a reason. I do certain things, and it's like you know, you will be rewarded for good service. Believe me, I don't deny my subs a little bit of pleasure now and again. You know, but. I'm in charge of the dynamic, and I am running this dynamic, and you know I need to know what I can do with you. You know, you may not want to get up on stage with me. Okay, let's find out what you are good at and yeah. what you can do to enhance the dynamic. What you can bring to the table—that's what I'm interested in. Exactly. Yeah, and sucking on my toes does not count as service. Well, I like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If, if they do good service, then maybe I'll yeah. let them allow them to suck one of my toes. See, by me, she's even suck on my toes. <laughs> well, it depends on the shoe. I saw a pair of boots that I want. <laughs> to see how quickly you guys get us boots. to change the topic here. <laughs> Wait, the question. Uh, no, I have a statement, my personal statement. I had Ooh. someone contact me on Color Me and asked me, um, you know, wanted to serve me. He says, I want to serve you. I says, and I wrote him back. I says, do you do Windows? And he wrote me back, no, I'm a Mac person. Ah, me, that was that's cooler. Yes. Um, we, have a, we do have a question, though, from Haven. Mm. Haven Star, do you find any inherent or distinctive differences between male versions and female submissives? Like male versus female submissives. Is there any difference? Mm. That's a loaded question. I think there can be, but there doesn't necessarily have to be. No. No, it, it does come down to the individual integrity of the person. Um, you know, I rarely take on male subs, but if they prove themselves to me that they, they are capable of service and they're going to be useful to me, I will give you a chance. You know, but I, I prefer female subs. They're usually more dedicated. Um, I can usually depend on them more. They're not afraid of hard work. And they usually have manners. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I, I found, you know, if you, subby girls seem to be a little more flaky if I meet them online, mm -hmm. but not in person. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's maybe one small difference I've noticed, but I am very much an equal opportunist. Um, I think my males actually come through a little bit more, um, but there are a few very, very good and dedicated female submissives out there that I hold close to my heart. Aww. Yeah, I have had the occasional good male submissive. Yeah. You know, so I don't rule you guys out. It's just that, you know, um, I've been disappointed more often than not. You know, yeah. I, I don't like to waste my time. And if you're wasting my time, it's bye bye. Yeah, definitely. You know, basically, it's like either we, we straighten out business in three emails or you're done. Oh, yeah, that's, that's way too much. No back and forth shit. No, I don't do that either, because if you can't get straight to the point, it's not going to work out. i got more important things to do with my time. Definitely. Besides, you know, I could be planning this awesome scene for you if you didn't waste my fucking time. <laughs> you know, think about it. You're cutting yourself off. Uh, another question. Uh, yeah, we have some questions and statements, and they're really enjoying the conversation. Um, <laughs> we're going to go with... Um, okay. Joanna made a comment. I think that this is an excellent point from both ladies. Speaking from experience, one has to be clear about what one is seeking to get from their appointment and what they are not seeking. Be honest, open, place yourself in hands of the professional. You are with me. Relax and enjoy. That was a great statement. Mm -hmm. And then we have a question from Switch Asa. Uh, ladies. When do you? When did you realize that you wanted to become a professional dom? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, 
Well, I would say, when did I want to? I mean, it was something I always wanted to do. Um, when did I have the opportunity? About four years ago or so. And um, went into a dungeon for an interview, and it ended up going really well. And I wasn't even sure that I was even, they were going to be interested in me whatsoever. And it went great, and I took pictures and was set up on the website and had my first session the very next day. And I've loved every second ever since. And I'd played for years before that, so it just felt natural and pretty much like something I had done forever. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I had a little bit different path to get here. <laughs> Tell us. I kept running into all these kinky guys that wanted me to do things, you know? Of course. So I, I played privately for years. I didn't know there was a community. And then um, I hooked up with a film producer up here in L.A. I was on a modeling job. And... Um, we mentioned a few things he found out was submissive, and he says, I know just where to bring you, and he brought me to Passive Arts. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so that was my first, my first public dungeon. Um, I figured he was just, you know, having shits and giggle with me. He's a film producer. I figured it was, you know, casting couch call, you know? It was going to be wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, on to the next model. So I treated it that way, and basically it was just like I thought. You know, we lost touch for a few months and everything. So I, I, you know, had gotten my end into the community, yep. and um, I, I made a few calls and inquiries, and then I got myself a dom. First thing I said to him is, "I want to be trained as a dom." Well, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out so uh, so well, and about a, a year. So later, I took Mr. Cyan's uh, class on how to be a pro dom, and I've been a professional ever since. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Issa, there's another question. Um, yes, I almost missed it. Sorry, Jason. Um, Jason says, "What are a few things? What are what are a few of? A, okay, what are a few things you would consider service? Mm. What do you consider service?" Service to me is coming into the dungeon, bringing me lunch, running errands if I need you to, making sure my car is pretty and spotless, um, uh, showing up at my events two hours beforehand to help me set up, make sure you have anything and everything I need during my events, and afterwards helping me break everything down and clean it up. That is service. Teamwork. <laughs> Something like that. Yes, reliable teamwork. Yes, reliable service. <laughs> No, I agree. That's that's what I look at as service, you know. Um, getting you off is not service right. to me. I can do that myself. You, you know, um, I need you to actually do stuff <laughs> for me. I have a collection of vibrators you will never match. You are not going to help me get off. But if you're good and you give me good service, I may just let you take a look at that collection. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're good, we might just play with some of those toys. But first, it's got to be service. You know, I got to see what you're going to bring to the DS dynamic. You know, it isn't all about play. It is a, a working, living, breathing dynamic. It's you know, it's a dance. You know, you provide me what I need, you will get your needs met. Definitely, and I think a lot of Subbies or new, newer subbies miss that point um, or that fact. Uh, they just want them, them, them. So take a second. And if you want a dominant, think about what you can do for them as well. Absolutely. Because and life is not a place to pick up a sex kitten or anything like that. That's not what it's about for me. <laughs> you know, I, I can do some pretty awesome things down that line. But no, um, service. Service is number one. Another question. Oh, we have several questions. Oh, um, and questions. Switch Aza said, she goes, applause. <laughs> okay, so that was great. Uh, Joanna said, a semi-serious question. Do your friends and family know that you earn a living this way? Or so far, have they? are they concerned? Um, freelance therapists. <laughs> <laughs> um, my most... Some of my family knows, most of my friends know. Um, I have parts of my family that it, just because they're older and religious, I'd prefer them not to know because it would probably kill them. Mm. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty open about what I do. I'm out there. I do 
guest in public appearances at, you know, anything from bars to dungeons to <laughs> musical events. So it, it all depends. But yeah, I'm pretty out there, so I can't really hide it. <laughs> yeah, I don't hide who I am. I mean, I might be more discreet in certain vanilla circles than sure. others. But if somebody confronts me point blank, I would never deny it. I right. would just be honest about it. You know, this is what I do. This is what I do for a living. I am an entertainer. You know, I'm an actor. I do many things, you know. And as I well like as an it. educator, you know. That's oh, yeah. I've been able to do more things in this lifestyle that, you know, I wasn't able to do in the vanilla world. And it's been very empowering for me. Totally. You know, so, I mean, it's a good thing, you know. And um, I don't know if many of my relatives know or not, but for the most part, I don't really care if they do. Most of, most of my life, they've always just kind of taken me with a grain of salt, going, oh, God, what's the next crazy thing she's into? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's a common factor. I think everyone working at the dungeons. <laughs> Yeah, I keep them entertained. <laughs> yeah, we have um, we have a question, another question, but also um, Joanna made a, um, a a comment on this. Good point, Mistress. You're not exactly trying to hide it. That's great. <laughs> and then Haven Star says, um, "Is there a certain protocol with a submissive that needs to be followed when they want to dissolve a DS dynamic breakup?" Oh. That is a good one because that can go in any direction depending on what the dynamic is. Right. I was going to say, you asked if there was a protocol for it. Um, well, I mean, it depends if there was a protocol set up beforehand mm -hmm. with your dominant, if that's, you know, that's something you guys should talk about when you enter in a, a DS relationship. Um, but if that is, isn't something that you guys discussed beforehand, I think just sitting down like you would go to talk about anything and basically, you know, listing exactly what the reasons are. Um, why it's being dissolved, um, mm -hmm. but before that even, I mean, unless something awful is happening, you should at least have a sit-down period and let them know that it's something you're considering so they can maybe even try to fix whatever isn't working well in the relationship, um, depending on how serious you like that dominant and how, how well you want it to work out. That's what I would do. And I know that the best dominance that I've personally been with, um, because I myself have been in service, are the ones that really want to work in the dynamic, you know, that don't just punish me for a behavior. We discipline yeah. and we work on correcting the behavior, but punishment is just totally cutting the whole thing off. Yeah. You know, and when I find a dominant that understands the difference between discipline and punishment, I will serve that person for as long as it takes until we decide whether or not we have irreconcilable. I can never say this word, irreconcilable. You know, irreconcilable. <laughs> yeah, differences, <laughs> or if it is a dynamic worth saving. You know, because sometimes we do end up in those situations where, as much as you want it to work, there's just something there that it's yeah. just never going to. It's oil and water. Yeah. And that does happen, but the mature thing is to acknowledge that. And and when something like that happens, if it's not completely dissolved in the situation, like if you don't want it to end completely, mm -hmm. there can always be play partners down the line, or you could serve that person and just not be collared and 100% mm -hmm. owned by them. So there are different avenues, avenues you can take depending on... Oh, what you really want to happen. Absolutely. There are people that I will take on as part-time subs that only want to serve me, say, for two events a year. Right. Because those are the events they really like, and it, it's something that they really enjoy doing. Well, you know, I am totally open, you know, to that. If you, you know, like a, cu a certain couple of events that I do and only want to serve for those events, well, talk to me. We will work something out. Yeah. Communication, huge. Yeah, and you never know, you know. Um, as a dominant, I learn new things all the time, you know. And um, I, I love to listen to, you know, a sub's suggestions and stuff. You know, sometimes they, they see something that you may have overlooked. Or they finally <laughs> recognize that thing you've been hoping they would see all along. Yeah. Well, they help you come up with really good challenges for the Survivor Challenge. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Considering they've been on the bottom, they know what to expect. Exactly. <laughs> And they know what would make them shiver their timbers. <laughs> Another question. Uh, yeah, we also have um, um, Darren has come into the chat room. Welcome, Darren, to the oh, show. Hi, Darren. And um, so the question is um, from Subby Bree. said, where do you see yourselves in the future, say, five or ten years from now? Do you want to develop this lifestyle choice further 
or career further? <laughs> uh, definitely. I have made many changes and strides um, over the last couple of years to eliminate uh, most of my vanilla jobs that I ever had and I basically make this my main career. Everything I do is to push forward as a dominant, as a professional dominant. Um, I don't necessarily um, know where I see myself in those years. Um, I definitely want to be playing. I don't necessarily if I'll be educating and teaching classes. Um, I'd love to way, way down the line own my own dungeon one day, but um, right now I'm just kind of going with the flow. Uh, I have my hands filled with parties, and I'm also on a show with Debbie Demon and Christy Canyons every Thursday now. Um, doing Thrasher Thursdays, so that's another just little thing that awesome. I've got, got my hands into and I'm getting started with, and I hope the radio show goes really well. So tune in and check me out on Thursdays between 2 and 3 on Sirius XM Radio 102. Awesome. Uh, yours truly. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. So I'm going to have to you. have you on that now. Oh, I would love to be <laughs> on that. No, I, I've always found doing these shows is so much fun. I am so glad that we are back on the air. Me too. You know, um, I look forward to this. I, I never thought I would enjoy hosting the show so much. But I get to meet such fabulous people, and we get to talk about really cool stuff. Oh, yeah. It's fun. You fun. know, and, um, you know, I just love, you know, bringing everybody's inner demons out and <laughs> <laughs> like, letting them run wild. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> Boy, I'm here gig smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of bringing things out, did we ever get hate mail from Todd's show about midgets? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't get any hate mail. That was the most hilarious show that I have seen in ages. You know, he is freaking awesome. Oh, wasn't he, though? Oh, yeah. He should come and do a show just on humor. He's, oh, so, he he's too funny. Could. He's he too was funny. Hilarious. Yeah. yeah, we are definitely going to have that man back on. Good. Yeah. I, I can't see some tattoos for my sister Betty. So. Oh, he did. He's done two or three, actually. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I was going to talk to him about some work for me. Yeah, he's fantastic. Cool. Cassie, mm. you know, TSR Network was off for quite a long time, and now it's back on again. And what's really amazing is... Um, both you and Genesis, your shows have been awesome since you guys have come back. And it's really glad to have, have you both back. Um, we're going to be getting Hudsey Hahn is coming back. Oh, yeah. And Javier, Javier is coming back. And we're always looking for new show ideas and new shows because we, you know, we, we finally got it. We finally figured out how to do this, you know, um, you know quick and, and fun. And, um, but TSR Network wouldn't be complete without you guys, you oh. know. I mean, you guys are what makes it. So, you know, I really appreciate what you do for TSR Network. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, thank you right back at you because I have to tell you, this is one of my greatest joys is doing my show. That and teaching rope. I'm just like the happiest camper ever. <laughs> I get to talk every week on a talk show and teach rope classes twice a month, and then you never know what else gets thrown in there. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Um, we have Haven. Haven, I asked her to to um, Haven Star. I said asked her to rewrite the the statement that she made or the question. So she just rewrote it for me. Um, you're talking about how to break up with you know with your master or your mistress or whatever. Um, she was saying, oh, I was saying that I have tried in the past to sit down and be honest and rational about about the um, finishing a relationship, but the approach didn't work. I'm thinking I need a different approach. And then she goes, LO, laughing at now. She says, perhaps change my phone number. Ah, yeah. Well, that is one way to do it. But, you know, I, I've had DS Dynamics break up before, um, you know, as the submissive. And um, sometimes I felt that I had to take charge and um, excuse myself from the dynamic. There was one situation where it was obvious that in the long run it was not going to benefit me. As a matter of fact, I was starting to get physically hurt and getting permanent scars. Mm -hmm. And a dynamic happened in the family and I just basically sat down and talked to him and said, you know this is not working between us and I need to respectfully leave the dynamic. And I chose to leave on my own. You know, usually I'll try to look at look out, but if you know, if you, 
the danger signs are going off, the red flags yeah. are there, you know, self-preservation should kick in and, you know, take care of yourself. Yeah, definitely if you've already tried to break it off and it is, doesn't seem to be working, go ahead and look out for you first. Just, you know, go ahead and put a final word in there, say your last little statement and let them know, you know, no matter what from this point on, you're not going to contact them back until you're ready to. And just take a break. Maybe find yourself a protector or someone to go out with when you go to kink stuff after that for a little while or go out with a group of friends. Yeah, and I know it can if you're be that scary. worried. Yeah, because yeah. I was in a, a DS dynamic for a really long time. I had never, ever gone out to a dungeon by myself. Ever. And the first time I went, and this was back when um, Mr. Cyan had the place up in Reseda, mm -hmm. I went there because I knew I would be safe. And I have to tell you, it's the scariest thing I ever did. And that was the first night that I started playing as a dom. Because people were coming out of the ward work like, oh my god, fresh meat. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I want some of that. And I'm like, you know what? I got my rope with her. Who wants to get tied? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, you, you have to honor who you are, you know, uh, whether you're submissive or dominant. Um, but the first thing that I go over with my submissive is um, yes, I'm in charge. But if you cannot take care of yourself, if you cannot yeah. hold down a job, finish school, take your personal responsibilities for your personal life, I'm not going to take you on. I need you to have your life together before you contribute to this dynamic. Definitely, definitely. Um, Haven Star says, um, excellent advice. We just had somebody else come into the chat room. Uh, it says his, his name is Phil, and he says, my name is Phil, and I'm enjoying your show for the first time. Well, thank you. Phil for coming by and you're going to be able to click on the player and watch the whole show from the beginning. So thank you very much for coming in and watching the show. Hello, and you. Haven Star thank says, you. do you have any tips for submerging the ego? You know, we you want to go a few more minutes? It's up to you two. Sure, sure. We're Let's fine do it. This is for Haven Star. Was that who asked this question? This is for Haven Star, yes. Well what was the question one more time? Um how do you any tips for submerging an ego, like getting rid of an ego. Mm, that's always a good one because some people are very, very um, headstrong. Yeah, uh, it would de depend on, on, I guess, how they play it off. But I, I enjoy crushing people's egos. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sometimes breaking them is part of the fun. Yeah, you know, it, it just depends on you know where the ego trip is coming from. Exactly, if what exactly it relates to. Try to. Crush that part to crush and, you know, the And sometimes it's where they're not as going to benefit them to crush that. If crushing their ego is going to cause psychological devastation, well, you know, we may not just be a match. You know, I, I don't want to be responsible for putting you in the mental institution. <laughs> and I'm most I'm certainly not, not going to put up with you being uppity and giving me trouble. Right. So, you know, it's like weigh the pros and cons here. You know, I have no problem breaking you if I think you're strong enough to survive it. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, uh, depending on what their ego trip is about, uh, maybe pick a part at that, or just don't give them any attention at all, and that might drive them just as insane. Oh yeah, that that usually does the trick. <laughs> Ignoring people. That is a good one. Do we have any other questions, or was that it? Um. Joanna said goodbye. Bye, Joanna. Bye, Joanna. See you tomorrow. Joanna said goodbye. Yeah, she said it was great, so she said goodbye. Um, we'll, we could take one last question. Anybody in the chat room has a question? If not, then we will think of another question and get it out there. Um, anybody, anybody? 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 Going once? Going twice? Going Otherwise, once? I'm going to go through this thing of uh, show questions. Sure. And see what do I want to ask Petra? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Are you easily aroused? Does just thinking about a kinky fantasy set your heart rate? Mm. Uh, maybe if it's the right kinky fantasy. Um, I'm really turned on by experience. I'm really turned on by intelligence. And I'm really turned on by good smells. So <laughs> <laughs> um, smells a huge turn on for, for me for some reason. So. Yeah, people forget about aromatherapy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and if you smell bad and you come to it, go make you take a shower. Yeah, yeah, not into <laughs> that stinky stuff. 
Let's see. Question. Ms. Chevron. Oh, this is from Pig Carrie. Oh, Carrie, what's up? How do you deal with a slave if they have an, is it injury? I-N-J-U-R-Y? Is that injury, right? Yeah. An injury. Mm -hmm. And can't serve you. Oh, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, how mm. do you deal with that? Well, I mean, if, if they've got an injury that physically, you know, they, they can't actually do something, um, yeah, there's other things to do. It's like, you know, you can go online and do things for me. You can do office work. You can make phone calls. You know, if, if your arms are broken and you can't dial a phone, well, you know, we do have, uh, I believe that, you know, there's the voice thing on there now. That's isn't yeah. really an excuse. <laughs> You know, you can usually find something for them to do. If not, you know, um, depending on the injury, um, you know, I may I may end up, you know, helping you out, you know, because yeah. I understand, you know, when a person is sick and injured, you know, and you are part of this DS dynamic, which is a family, you know, it, it sometimes, you know, the dominant does take care of you in that way. Yeah. You know, I, I may nurse you back to health because I need you to do something. But you know, it, it just—it's an individual situation, and it depends on the injury itself. Yeah, the in, uh, injury and the individual as well, depending on how much you want to. Yeah, if your ego's just bruised, don't pull that injury crap. <laughs> that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> we also have someone that's just entered the chat room, and she was here earlier to watch um, um, Inside Fetish with um, Goddess. Um, Genesis and it is uh where did she go? Oh no. Where did she go? <laughs> Ashley, where did you go, Ashley? I know you're watching. Ashley, <laughs> come back to the chat room. <laughs> did you find her? It's Ashley Rain Ashley Rains. Oh goodness, yeah. where did Ashley go? Uh, I don't know, but we have another question. We have another question in the chat room. It's from Jason. Miss Cassie, do you have any ideas what your next rough class might cover? Oh, well, uh, we've been doing more decorative stuff lately, so we're going to get back to basic bondage again. Um, you know, I've had a lot of requests to do karatas lately. Um, there's a few people that want to do the body harness, so we may go ahead and explore that again. Um, I do take requests. If you have a particular tie that you want to learn in one of my uh, classes, just drop me an email either on FetLife at Miss underscore Cassie or you can email me directly on Gmail at MissCassieLovesRope at gmail.com. And I'm always interested in hearing what people want to learn. Absolutely. We have a statement in the chat room. Haven Star said, show was awesome tonight, by the way. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. All right. It looks like we're getting ready to wind down here. The questions are slowing down. I guess everybody must be getting sleepy, getting ready for bed, or getting ready for that late night play date. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to welcome everybody for tuning in tonight. Thank my guest, Mistress Tetris. She was Thank absolutely you. fabulous. <laughs> Our peanut gallery was great, you know. All the people in the chat room, you were wonderful. It's always wonderful to hear from you, Carrie. And um, next week's show, um, I've got a, a couple of different things coming up. Um, I'm hoping to have one of our mistresses from the dungeon here next week. My sister, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. We're waiting for absolute confirmation, but she's going to be a blast. <laughs> and then I've been talking to two of our best cam girls down at the dungeon, and we're going to do a show talking about camming Fantastic. and what they do to entice those guys in and what makes them so good at what they do. We must be talking about Rainy and... And um, she's going to see if Charlie won't come on with her. Wonderful. Yeah, and I understand the two of them have quite a chemistry together. Yeah, I've heard about a couple of their, their scenes and their yes, videos. Maybe. Yes, we do want to hear these stories. That'll be a wonderful show. I think so. <laughs> I think so. So we're definitely going to have some interesting guests coming up here. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And we'll see you next week for a fabulous show. And one last thing. Did anybody think that Mrs. Miss Tetra is naughty or nice? Woo! -hoo. Woo! <laughs> you guys think. <laughs> so please type in the chat room, naughty or nice. You got any takers? Um, 
there's a little bit of a lag because it's going over the internet, but while we're waiting for the lag for them to type in, on um, March 30th, we are going to be having the very, very first town hall meeting live at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. And right now we have confirmed so far it's um, Jay Wiseman. Oh, very good. And we have Kane from the Lear de Sade. Uh, I've reached out to to Mr. Cyan, and um, we're supposed to talk. And then we have um, we have other people too that we have asked, and we're just waiting on confirmation from them. So it's going to be a really, really um, interesting, interesting show. It'll be about an hour or two hours long. It'll be about um, about our community across the country. Oh, awesome! Are you going to do that like on split screen, or? <laughs> I know we're going to be doing it. They're all going to be in their own home or their own uh -huh. dungeon. Uh, Kane's going to be broadcasting from the Lear de Sade. And I talked to Genesis today, and, and if Genesis and Mr. Cyan can make it, then they'll be broadcasting from their studio. Um, and it's just going to be a very you know laid-back, interesting conversation about how we can make BDSM and our life choice and our community better. Oh, so, I love that. That's, that's a great idea. That is yeah. a great show. So we show. can we can take up to ten people in in the in the room having this conversation, and so people will chime in on their own computers, and it's going to be the first of its kind. And um, you mm -hmm. know we've um, please that we've asked John Baku, and I haven't heard back from him oh, yet, so I'm so waiting fun. on him. Yeah, you know, to let me know if he can do this. But if you know of anybody, you know that's out there, that's a really really. Uh, Fascinating person that's a mover and a shaker in the BDSM community. Please, you know, shoot them my way because we're looking for you know some some awesome hosts. I mean, awesome guests. Uh, but you know what? They're starting to really scream out this thing. You got one naughty, Ooh. one nice, one nice and naughty, <laughs> one so naughty it's nice. Ha ha. <laughs> one naughty. So you know, I think she's she's bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you got it. Aww. Thanks, so, everybody. Well, let's let's ask let's ask um, um, Ray, our you know our our one of our producers. So, is she naughty or nice, Ray? Well, you missed one. It's nicely naughty, actually, and then <laughs> <laughs> naughty with some nice with a killer smile. There you go. Yeah, that that was that, that was a new one. That was that was from guest three three eight. Hello, Hi. naughty with some nice. With a killer smile, we love that. Thank you. Ooh, that is really cool. Well, you know, everybody's a little bit naughty and a little bit nice, and I think we need to embrace both parts of us. <laughs> I'll be very naughty on Friday at Steve Hunk Apocalypse, so come on, check us both out. Oh, absolutely, and that is the event to be naughty at. <laughs> <laughs>